California has long been considered a trendsetter, a birthplace for new ideas that eventually sweep the country. At times of crisis and opportunity, our democracy has done great work. During the Great Depression, through the Works Progress Administration, we invested 11 billion to put 8.5 million people back to work and got our economy moving forward again. During the booming 1960s, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, over eight short years invested $26 billion and developed countless technological breakthroughs to land us on the moon. Today, we no longer have a democracy that establishes great missions, nor elected leaders like FDR and JFK, who personified public service. Instead of a government of, for, and by the people, we have contracted out democracy. So you hand it over to private enterprise. From our war in Iraq, to our efforts to address homelessness here in Los Angeles County. We have allowed for-profit and non-profit corporations to take on the common challenges that we should embrace together. This is the Homeless Industrial Complex. In 1851, New York State granted Western Union Telegraph Company. It was this legacy that all corporations, ranging from charities to universities to joint stock companies, joined together for benevolent public purposes. The Two Philanthropists. This infamous drawing by Joseph Kepler published in Puck Magazine on February 23, 1881, is an uncannily decipher of the coming of a new corporate universe. A universe in which philanthropy controls our democracy. But the most sinister part is that these billionaires are also donating massive amounts of money to think tanks and advocacy groups that focus on changing our laws to suit their personal politics and influencing our lawmakers to go easy on their businesses. You've all made excellent points. I'd be happy to ensure none of our laws will interfere with your interests. The result of all this philanthropy is that billionaires have more power than voters. Philanthropy has one specific meaning, the private distribution of wealth, often first earned through profit-making, through non-profit institutional forms. Using non-profit institutions to make massive profit gains. Oh, swell. There's a huge amount of fraud in nonprofit organizations. In fact, it's estimated that it's approximately 40 to 50 billion dollars per year by the New York Times. And it's also estimated that it encompasses approximately 20% of all charitable organizations. That's one in five charitable organizations. In the 1870s, the name nonprofit was officially born. To understand the true nature of the homeless industrial complex, we must first ask ourselves, what is an industrial complex? An industrial complex is when a for-profit or non-profit industry successfully develops independent, interlocking systems and institutions that serve to maintain the profits for that industry. More than a thousand of the nation's nonprofits have each acknowledged losses of a quarter million dollars or more because of theft, embezzlement, or other unauthorized use of funds. They all depend on the industry for their survival. An example the homeless population and the nonprofit contractors that are supposed to serve them. In other words, exploit the crisis while earning billions along the way.
More than 7,400 homeless people in Los Angeles County have received permanent housing thanks to Measure H. But we'll have to pay more out of our own pockets. Voters overwhelmingly passed Measure H. Now cost the city as much as $837,000 per housing unit for the homeless. Proposal in the ongoing effort to manage the homeless crisis. And we have breaking news at 6 p.m. L.A. City Councilman Mark Ridley Thomas is indicted on federal corruption charges, accused in a bribery and fraud scheme. L.A. Supervisor Mark Ridley Thomas withdrew $250,000 from his Mark Ridley Thomas Committee for a Better L.A. and put it towards Measure H campaign funding. This is the same campaign account used to make a dubious contribution to USC on behalf of his son, Sebastian. In return, Ridley Thomas was paid $84,343 from the for-profit and non-profit contractors who received the money from Measure H. I believe that no one who's indicted for public corruption and who is suspended by the city council is therefore entitled to continue to collect pay from the city. He would join former councilman Jose Huizar, who was suspended after being charged with bribery and racketeering, and Mitch Englander, who was in prison for lying to federal authorities while serving in office. It is shocking that this is now the third indictment of a council member or former council member of the city of Los Angeles in just two years. In March 2017, Los Angeles County voters passed Measure H to secure ongoing funding to address the homeless crisis. As of 2020 through 2021, Measure H money has been distributed by the county to 153 contractors. Of these 153 contractors, 131 were nonprofits. Three women are facing charges of stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars from an LA homeless nonprofit. Three in five nonprofits garnered more than 50% of their revenues from government grants. This percentage is even higher if we factor in government contracts. The homeless industrial complex is raising their salaries faster than the housing they are supposed to be building and the shelters they are supposed to be providing. The homeless industrial complex has taken on a life of its own. But opponents of the proposed measure say it's just more waste. Voters approved Measure H, adding a quarter percent sales tax. Right now, the homeless crisis only seems to be worsening. Well, they're thinking that somehow, if we build enough housing, permanent housing, supportive housing, we're going to end homelessness in LA. It's a fairy tale. The odds of them seeing God are greater than that because it will never be built. And the more you build, the more people will come because. Right now, we have 25% of the nation's homeless are in LA County. And you tell me what's gonna prevent more people from coming to LA if they see, hey, that guy got the half a million dollar condo with a beach view. I want one too. I'm in Nebraska and it's really cold here in winter. So I'm going to LA. Measure H is the most recent effort to contract out government services over the last two generations. That story begins in 1978 with the passage of LA County's Proposition A. That law allowed the county to contract out work when it was economical to do so. Since 1979, the income of the vast majority of the Angelinos has decreased significantly, while the incomes of the professional class increase dramatically.
The homelessness crisis is another chapter in the story of LA's struggle over the last two generations with extreme inequality. Racial inequality and the inequities threaten the region's long-term economic prosperity. People of color are far more likely to be impoverished or working poorer than whites. Nearly a quarter of the county's African Americans, 24.5%, and Latinos, 23.7%, live below the poverty level, compared with about one in 10 whites, 10.6%. Latinos are much more likely to be working in poverty compared with all other groups. The working poverty rate for Latinos is 12.5%. Among full-time wage and salary workers, there are racial gaps in median hourly wages at all levels. Among college graduates with a bachelor's degree or higher, Blacks, Asian Americans, and Pacific Islanders earn $6 less than their white counterparts, while Latinos earn $9 an hour or less. The Los Angeles region's rising inequality its racial gaps in income, education, and wages is not only bad for our communities of color, but it also hinders the whole region's economic growth, prosperity, and directly contributes to the homeless crisis. The measure that was intended to help the homeless has arguably benefited the professional class alone, not the homeless. Since 2010, the homeless population in LA has shot up from 38,700 to 80,700. In the last decade alone, nonprofit 501c3s, homeless service provider executives, and directors had a pay increase of 108%. Measure H nonprofit contractors top executives and directors raked in a staggering $113 million. Simultaneously, homelessness is up 45%. There appears to be a direct correlation between increases in executive salaries and increases in the homelessness population. And the more I looked into it, the less sense it made. And the more money that the government spent on the issue, the more homeless we were getting. And it was like, this doesn't add up, you know. The correlation seemed to be spend more, and have more homeless. get more homeless. Many Measure H nonprofits dramatically increased the compensation of their top executives and directors. One nonprofit, First Step Staffing, increased top executives and directors' compensation by a staggering 1,314%. First Step Staffing also increased its CEO's compensation by 521%. Another nonprofit, Century Housing, increased top executives and directors' compensations by 3.4 million. Century Housing during this period increased its CEO compensation by 277%. Measure H doesn't benefit nonprofit workers either. Most nonprofit frontline staff, unlike government workers, do not have the power of the union. As a result, these frontline workers are paid the minimum wage or slightly better. Many are not even given enough hours to be full-time workers. These nonprofit jobs, to be frank, are low quality. The bottom line is that the frontline nonprofit workers are barely better off than the people they are dedicating their lives to help. A full-time minimum wage worker of a small nonprofit earns $27,560 annually, just above the poverty line. 
I'm Heidi Marston. I'm the executive director for the Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority. Heidi Marston, the head of the Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority, has announced her resignation on Twitter, citing a disagreement with the organization's board about the salaries of its lowest paid staffers. In her resignation letter, she was fighting for higher pay for the front lines people and capping the pay of the top people, which I fully agree with. The executive director says she's leaving because some staffers are paid so little they qualify for homeless services themselves. Stating LASA employees shouldn't be paid so little that they qualify for homeless services themselves. Marston also froze the salaries of LASA's 10 highest paid staffers. These are humans. They are people who have been failed by our systems over and over. They are people who have tried to get back up and have been kept down. In resigning, she stated, homelessness is a scar on the face of our nation. And we did reach out directly to Marston to talk about her resignation. We did not hear back. You, you make that a big point um, about political will. So are you really saying that the Board of Supervisors doesn't want to uh, clean up the streets of Los Angeles County, that it, it actually lines their pocketbook. I heard you make that something to that effect uh, on the airwaves earlier this week. They're in the business well, of this. Well, you have a homeless industrial complex that has $6.5 billion disappear into that rabbit hole, and we saw the homeless population double in size. At what point does a logical person say, hmm, In this difficult day, in this difficult time for the United States, it's perhaps well to ask what kind of a nation we are and what direction we want to move in. America is essentially a dream. It is a dream of a land where men of all races, of all nationalities, and of all creeds, can live together as brothers. But we have to make an effort in the United States. We have to make an effort to understand, to get beyond or go beyond these rather difficult times. The substance of the dream is expressed in these profound words. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal even in our sleep, pain which cannot forget falls drop by drop upon the heart until in our own day despair, against our will, comes wisdom through the awful grace of God. That they are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. What we need in the United States is not division. What we need in the United States is not hatred. What we need in the United States is not violence and lawlessness, but is love and wisdom and compassion toward one another. Feeling of justice toward those who still suffer within our country to tame the savageness of man and make gentle the life of this world. And say a prayer for our country and for our people. Thank you very much.